morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramph. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Asaph, what tune was that? That's my uh, feeble attempt of David Boy's Let's Dance. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, it'll only get better. Cool. Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. It's Friday, uh, TGIF. We have a great show for you. We've got Trinda Reek on, uh, talking about Off the Rack, which happens next weekend. So we'll find out more information about that in a little bit. We have um, a bunch of other stuff going on. We have some city council stuff um, mm -hmm. featuring um, zero climate action that the city of Missoula is taking cool. and is working with Home Resource. And, uh, nice. and of course, Jeremy Drake is going to be on that program. Cool. So I'll talk about that later on today in the show. Uh, we have some... Uh, what am I looking for? What am I thinking about? Uh, we've got uh, events, we've got city council, we've got weather, we've got our snow report. Full show for us today. Yes, on our very own first Friday. And yeah. it, things are warming up, and as um, this one lady randomly walked by and said to me, Huh, there's something in there, Stacy. There's what? Well, that's what she said. Yeah, there's something hear. in there, Stacy. Oh. It was like I was just walking down the street and I heard a, like a voice. It's like, and I looked and there was just like these two women are just walking across the street. It's like six thirty in the morning. There's something and, in the air, Stacy. <laughs> yep. That's and, hilarious. And that perfectly describes the weather today, because of course today you can expect a twenty percent chance of snow, but it's gonna be mostly cloudy. But it's not gonna be too cloudy, because you might see the sun today, which is nice. But tonight you can have a fifty percent chance of snow. Throughout the weekend, it is going to be snowing like every last couple weekends. Mm -hmm. It's been snowing. It has and been snowing a lot. And it's been great for. Those of you who like to go on the mountain, you yep. go shushing and um, skiing, and cross country. Uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, ter ter Teramac skiing? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Heelless no. skiing? Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, Tamarack. I don't think Not it was so, that. Tamarack? I totally forget what it was called, too. Telemark. Telemark. Telemark skiing, yes. yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah, I have to think about, oh yeah, it's a phone call. But I've got the uh, snow report for you guys to get you all geared up for your weekend and see what's coming ahead um, or, you know, what already happened. So up at Whitefish, they got one inch of new snow and their lower base depth is 45 inches and their upper base depth is 96 inches. Over Blacktail, they got two inches of new snow in the past 24 hours. Uh, lower base depth is 34 inches and their upper base depth is 80 inches. Um, let's see, over at Snow Bowl, we've got zero new inches of snow, 42 inches on the lower, 76 inches on the upper. Over at Lost Trail, we've got zero inches of new snow, 55 inches on the upper, 60 inches on, no, 55 inches lower, 60 inches upper. And then our last mountain that's close enough within driving range uh, is Discovery Ski Area. Zero inches of new snow in the past 24 hours, 35 inches on their base depth, and then 50 inches on their upper base depth. Cool. Yeah, that's his snow report. Yep. But of course, um, I'm really excited um, because we are officially ready to start taking in kids to our summer camps. Oh. Which is why I brought this handy dandy form right here. Great. But let's you can to, find it. Let's go to camera three. Yeah, we can go to camera three. Here's camera three. Ooh, all wordy and yeah. um, free of liability. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, to find out more, um, you can log on to our website because it's as easy as going on to our website, which is... Oh, where is my website? <laughs> okay, you go to MCAT.org, and you, and you know, you scroll through here, and you come up to a summer camp program where you see a bunch of these kids on the couches. Oh, they kind of look bored. I, I should change that. They totally look bored. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should definitely change that. Okay, so you click on it, and it should, and it downloads the, um, the form. Oh, cool. Yep, all you gotta do is just click on the picture and it downloads the form. And then where should people turn that form in, Scott? Uh, they should turn it into MCAT. They can also email if they just fill out the form and send it as a PDF. If they, you know, if they have if they have access to be able to download mm -hmm. it. because it is a PDF, you're able to edit the uh, form as well oh, online. Perfect. So, um, the new thing this year is that our summer camp is offering a zombie movie making workshop. We want we call it a workshop because it's for older kids. It's for kids uh, or teens, young adults, age 13 to 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we make a zombie movie. Cool. Yeah. I can't wait. That'll be really fun. And so we do zombie makeup in the morning and then make the movie in the afternoon. Yep. Yes. Monday is going to be the introduction day where we're trying to figure out how we're going to do this. And then, of course, Tuesday, Wednesday will be the makeup film days. Cool. And, and then Thursdays will be editing. Editing. And then Friday we watch premiere. it. premiere. Cool. Well, nice. like Friday is mostly like editing half the day. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then we watch it. Yeah. It should be pretty chaotic, but mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to yep. it. And I'm excited because our very own uh, Kendra mm -hmm. uh, from MCAT is writing the script. And I sent you the outline. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
it, it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. I can't wait. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy it. But of course, uh, for the younger kids, nine to thirteen, we have our animation camp, and of course, we have uh, I want a, a wildlife filming camp where we go yep. raptors of the Rocky and film some birds. Yeah, it should be pretty sweet. But we've got some new programming for you guys. So this is happening on channel one eighty nine, and it looks like it's a Montana Book Festival part fifteen. Yes, the never ending series. The under, never ending series. <laughs> So this will be on channel 189 this evening. Yep. One of the things we're, we're blessed with on this panel is, is several editors who have actually worked with a lot of freelancers. Maybe we can put some numbers on this and, and show um, what, what they're facing. Um, so I, I think Andrea and Sarah and Skyler have all worked with freelancers. Can you tell us how that looks from the editorial side? Uh, and maybe give us some numbers of how many crews you get and that sort of thing. Um, well, the interesting thing for me is that when uh, working at the New Yorker, um, I actually didn't get a huge number of pitches from people, um, probably because it is uh, a place where people know there's a lot of staff writers, um, there is a high bar, and so you're not going to get quite as many uh, queries coming in. But I probably fielded several dozen pitches over my 12 years or so. Hey everybody, we're here with Trinda and she's here to talk about um, Off the Rack. Yes. Yep. So, for those of you, of you who are watching, what is Off the Rack? So, Off the Rack is our annual fundraiser. We do one big fundraiser a year for Blue Mountain Clinic Family Practice. Um, we are a primary care practice for people who don't know who Blue Mountain Clinic is. We're a primary care practice here in Missoula. We've been around for 40 years, and almost 40 years. And so Off the Rack, which here's our little poster. I'm gonna look at the camera. One oh time. yeah, hold it up. So, yeah. uh, and uh, we have been doing it. This is our ninth year. It's a condom fashion show. Uh, it's all about healthy sexuality and um, safe sex and all those things that are good and positive about sex and gender and all of those things encompassing. So That's awesome. Yeah. Great. And so where is it usually held? It's at the Wilma. Okay. Um, every year. We're excited this year. It's new now that Nick and mm -hmm. the top hat on it. So that's going to be really fun. We're excited. I don't know if you guys have been in there yet, but yeah, it's beautiful. super cool. Yeah. Um, so... It's at the Wilma. We do a VIP reception before. Uh, the tickets are a little bit more expensive, but it's hosted beer and wine, appetizers, um, super fun mm -hmm. at Garlington Building this year. So, and I think tickets are almost sold out to that. Wow. So, cool. How yeah. much are VIP tickets? Seventy-five dollars, okay. and then general admission are twenty-five. Okay. Um, definitely buy because it's usually a sold-out show. And it's there. I think there's like 100 less seats or 120 less seats. Oh, wow. Yeah. So buy your tickets now. Don't, Don't wait. Mm -hmm. And so what is what is sort of like the outline of the show? So it's it's a fashion show, and people make these outfits out of condoms, and it's hilarious. Like some of them are so amazingly beautiful it's crazy I'm like mm -hmm. I don't I don't have that type of artistic <laughs> ability but I mean it's awesome so we have it's a runway show we do have some acts um, we have a silk aerialist this year which Ooh. is going to be really cool mm -hmm. she hangs down from the, the rafters cool. and spins around it's going to be really cool uh, we have a cellist mm -hmm. which I think is going to be really cool and different um, we, ha we do have a couple speakers this year um, and yeah, so it's, you know, two hour show real quick. All the proceeds go to Blue Mountain Clinic. Um, cool. So yeah. That sounds gonna, great. Let's talk a little bit more about Blue Mountain Clinic. What do you guys do? What is your mission statement? So our missions, we're kind of in the process of re, um, working our mission statement. Um, but we basically want to provide high quality choice based care to, and we provide care all over uh, to people all over Montana mm -hmm. in the Northwest. Um, so we do, we are a primary care practice and we do uh, specialize in women's reproductive health care. Um, so um, anywhere from long acting reversible contraception to abortions to, you know, all encompassing. And, and then we do serve the rest of the community, mm -hmm. men, women, children, trans care, the whole the whole package so great yeah you yeah. get all of com the community of Missoula yeah underneath we do. one roof and, That's and awesome. yeah and the community has been really really good to us over the years and mm -hmm. next year we turn 40 wow. so it'll be our 10th annual off the rack so 
I was just saying before, you guys should put together an outfit. Yeah, we should. I would totally do an outfit. Yeah. I could sew it. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. <laughs> I've got lots of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> They're only for that. Don't use them for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. Uh, Missoula has a condom shortage. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so, um, how do you know of like how many condoms usually go into like an outfit? I, I think it varies. Like some of them are really intricate and have a ton. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think last year our Dr. Bank, Joey Banks, who's one of our docs at the clinic, I think she had like, I, I don't, I want to say it was definitely in the hundreds. Wow. I mean, and that's a lot of unwrapping condoms and mm -hmm. unrolling them and they're unlubricated mm -hmm. and they're kind of powdery. So you sit there and, and you know, I yeah. mean, it's like latex and powder. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds difficult. Yeah. So, so some of them, you know, and, and they do everything from unrolling them all the way. Uh, we have an artist this year who is doing kind of a cowgirl theme and has unrolled her condoms all the way and put, I think she put a little bit of sand oh, in the bottom so it hangs and kind of, you know, oh, like, like fringe. Yes, yeah. like fringe. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, we have people that don't unroll them at all. And so they're just like, a, you know, like a little nipple basically, mm -hmm. and, which is awesome. Yeah, it looks like little ruffles. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, cool. I've seen um, uh, like where they do like, like coats out of it and they're not like, like taken out they're just like yeah. in their cases in the and then they have like just a bunch of squares it's kind yeah. of like a giant quilt exactly yeah. yep yeah. a good we have actually a um we have a what's it called a, a exhibit set up in the macy's window so if people oh, cool. kind of want to get an idea of what people are doing and there's some really good mm -hmm. ones in there there's some bathing suits and a poodle skirt i think is in there Wow. And then some wow. uh, wings, some like cupid wings. Cool. Yeah, I mean people people get crazy and do really really fun stuff, and it's great. And it's just a rocking event. Like people yeah. are having a good time mm -hmm. and they're cheering and. I mean, God, who doesn't want to get excited about condoms? Exactly. Condoms are fun. <laughs> they do. They're great. They're a good thing, everyone. <laughs> so, um, if you want to learn more Thank information you. about this, <laughs> where can they go? To they find can go uh, to bluemountainclinic.org, or um, they can check us out on Facebook, uh, Author Act 2016. They, we have our. Um, it's called the Let's Talk. About, I'm going to hold this up one more time. Mm -hmm, the Let's Talk About Sex. Um, so look that up on. Uh, Facebook, the Wilma's website, you can find us on there as well. Um, but go to bluemountainclinic.org. That's probably the best place to start. And you can check out our, all our awesome sponsors for the event. And so, yeah. So then when and where? One more time. Uh, February 13th at the Wilma Theater at 7 p.m. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very thank much. You thank you, guys. This was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> and we will be right back after this. Birthdays come and go each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to missoulaagingservices.org. A great day for me includes a walk outside with my wife. My great day includes reading a good book. A great day for me includes the morning crossword puzzle. My great day includes playing the piano. As you grow older, Missoula Aging Services can help direct your aging journey with a new Options for Better Aging program. Give them a call at 728-7682 to find out more. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one. Hey, we're back, and oh. you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, because we show the, you know, like Missoula Aging We can only like show three, so many PSAs. From the Missoula Aging Service. I probably should differentiate them on the playlist. But, anyways, Maybe we do yeah. have some events to talk about. So We sure do, you guys. It's First Friday, so uh, I've got lots of First Friday events for you. So, uh, pretty much, I've got, oh, where am I? I'm right here. I have uh, music hey. and art for your first Friday. So we're starting uh, later on in today. We're starting at 4.30 in the afternoon today. At the Montana Natural History Center, they've got a gallery opening for Madeline Michelon. And she is going to be showing very beautiful paintings inspired by the specimens at the Modern Natural History Center. 
Over at Sushi Hana downtown, they've got a first Friday with Emily Elliott and Lindsay Tucker. They'll be showing their work upstairs. Uh, yeah. There's first Friday over at the Radius Gallery. They have got Lucy Capehart, who's a kinetic assemblage. Oh, Lucy Capehart, Stephen Glukert, and Randy O'Brien. I love like yeah. Stephen Glukert. I know he's great. Uh, they're over at Bathing Beauties. They've got earrings to dream by. They win art show filled with lots of earrings. Starts at 5 p.m. Uh, over at Gecko Designs, Austin Slominski, uh, his show is called A Vulgar Language, and it's, uh, it explores our constant desire to design technology to emulate human behavior and the dread and excitement that this desire creates. That should be really interesting. It should be, because we're... <laughs> Maybe in a, about 50, 100 years, the planet will be uh, usable by humans, so we have to create robots to replace us. Oh, that sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> I hope yeah. not. But of course, it's uh, Gecko, not Geico. Yeah, it's Gecko. I said Gecko. gecko. I, no, I, that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, For the audience. Gecko. I didn't do it. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to <laughs> make you doubt yourself. Because <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm not saying anything. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Geico. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gecko. Okay, but we're going back over to uh, we're going over to Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Montana Properties. They've got a gallery night. They are featuring work from the photographer Brian Powers. His show is called A Soul's Window. Over at Lake Missoula Tea Company, they've got paintings by John Zel Zelanzi. That's a hard name. There are lots of hard last names to read. Um, and it's called From My Mind's Eye. Uh, over at Gallery 709 in Montana Art and Framing, uh, they've got Bob Marshall Country Photos by Lee Silliman. And they are 8 by 10 inch contact prints, pretty much just in the Bob Marshall. Um, from, I think it was from, you know, his past, previous trips. Over at E3 Convergence Gallery, Bela Arietta, she has a show called Collections and Connections. Um, and is, she is working on watercolors and hot press paper. Over at Betty's Divine, they've got a show called Clean Energy. This starts at 5 p.m. This is put on by Claire Bergeron. Um, and it is pretty much a photo series of strong, beautiful women without any makeup on. Her artist statement is a little classier than what I just said. So go down there and read that. Um, and then over at Mask Indi over at Mask Studio and Training Agency, they've got a Mask Indiegogo get down. <laughs> starts at 5 so it's a tea party and a raffle to raise money for their upcoming event, A Mask in Wonderland, which is a performance art rendition of Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah, so they'll have a bunch of uh, raffle things and art. And, yeah. There's an opening reception at the Clay Studio of Missoula. It's called International Cup 2016. It starts at 530. It's an exhibit showcasing ceramic work that explores the infinite, infinite possibilities of the idea of a cup. Um, there are, let's see, it's, there are 45 entries by 35 artists that have been selected from over 200 entries by 107 applicants from all around the world. Pretty cool. And that's open till February, through February. Uh, over at Clyde Coffee tonight at 5.30, they're having a Valentine making party. Um, so you can go in there and have unlimited collage supplies and make a Valentine. Over at 111, they've got some new artwork. Um, Christian Ives will be doing a live painting and displaying new work from the last few months. And now we've got some music. Beargrass will be at the Montana Distillery at 6 p.m. Uh, Irish music is at the, church, at the Union Club at 6. There is the ACDA Benefit Concert, the open space at 7.30. Um, there's Fish, Fish Bowl Friday Winter Warm Up at Monks at 9. I, I think it's going to be like some DJs. There's Black Mountain Moan and the Box Cutters at Stage 112 at 9. Danico and Mr. Soap will be playing at the Real Lounge at 9. So Indie Documentary Premiere and Celebration Party. Um, this is a movie tour, so it's a film that's going to be at the Roxy Theater at 6 or 7. And then you can meet the people that are in the movie and have a celebration with them at the Palace at 9. Um, I don't really know what the So Indie Documentary Premiere is. So if you guys want are curious, you can just look that up so yourself. Indie. Yeah. So indie. So indie. Band in Motion is playing at the Union Club at 9.30, and Dakota Poor Man is playing at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30 as well. So now, uh, that's what's going on on Friday. Up next, we're switching gears over to ASAP segment. Boy, this is going to be an interesting story here. You know, I did a story on a king last Wednesday when I talked about Steve McQueen. So we're going to do a story about another king. 
Anyway, before there was Tiger Woods, there was the king of golf. And of course, we are referring to Arnold Daniel Palmer, known to the world as Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer is a retired American professional golfer. And um, he has won numerous events on both the PGA Tour and Champions Tour dating back to 1955, nicknamed the king. And let's show that clip of him first, and then I'll tell you his accomplishments to conclude this. As a 19-year-old, Arnold burst on the golfing scene when he won the U.S. Amateur. Six years later at the Masters, Palmer came into America's living rooms one birdie away from victory. I remember that one well. Here it comes, the five or six iron. The ball on the green, and within approximately three feet of the pin, a magnificent shot by Arnold Palmer. He's I'll never forget now, that Now, this scene. is an Arnold amazing accomplishment well, here, referring to him as the king. According to history, he went to school with Fred Rogers, you know, the actor in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> so I guess he's in pretty good company. But anyway, um, he, was born in, he was born in Pennsylvania. He um, attended the Wake Forest College on a golf scholarship, served time in the United States Coast Guard, where he was practicing his skills. He won his first rookie season in 1955 in the Canadian Open, uh, the Canadian Open earning $2,400 in his first match. And then his popularity began to grow, and he went on to win seven major championships. Four Masters in 1958, 1960, 62, and 64. U.S. Open in 1960, the Open Championships, 61 and 62. And his most prolific years were from 1960 to 1963, where he won 29 PGA Tour events, including five major tournament victories in four seasons. He won the Hickok Belt Professional Athlete of the Year and Sports Illustrated Magazine Sportsman of the Year Award. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. His followers called him, they called themselves Arnie's Army. And in 1967, he was the first man to ever earn a million dollars in the PGA Tour. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. And uh, he's just, finally, he went on to win um, the PGA Tour Lifetime Award in 1998, the Achievement Award. He won the John Stewart, oh, I mean the Payne Stewart Award in 2000. He won the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2004 and the Congressional Gold Medal in 2009. So that's kind of a flyover of his career. And you know, it'd be impossible to talk about everything this man ever did. Yeah. But he set the standard that's set to this day in golf. So cool. all the people that came after him are trying to be the king. Yeah. But there's only one king, and that's Arnold Palmer. And I thought it'd be fun to bring him back to life and talk about his career. Mm -hmm. cool. So if you were the king of something, what would you be the king of? Or if you already are the king of something? Well, I'll, I'll never be a king of anything, but uh, if I could, maybe the piano. <laughs> but that ain't gonna happen, Aww. not with Liberace, but uh, I enjoy <laughs> playing. <laughs> but Arnold, Con Arnold Palmer, he was just an amazing golfer, and if, you, if your audience looks him up, he's got like, what, a 10-page resume, and I just got the first couple of pages. Cool, that's awesome. Thanks I'll quote on that note stuff. there. That was Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. We'll be right back after this.
right, you guys, we're back. And we've got some stuff going on on Saturday. <clears throat> okay, so this is just pretty much like a general flyover. Um, starting at 10 a.m. is the Missoula Winter Farmer's Market. That's going to be at the Hive. Ooh. And then we have Hooked on Art over at Bonner School, as we heard earlier this week from Aaron Roberts. Um, it's art vendors in the gym, art class for kids, lots of live music and food in their cafeteria. Uh, there is Forestry Community Day in the Schreiber Gym at the University of Montana tomorrow morning. Um, so they're building the Forester's Ball. And yeah, I think it's pretty much them, them building the Forester's Ball. Take Your Child to Library Day is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at Missoula Public Library. Um, I do believe that they are, uh, but all of their activities are, are surrounded by birds and feathers. So you pretty much can just like take your kid to the library and learn about cool stuff. So flock on down. Yeah. I, I was like hoping that you'd say something about flock together. No, um. I didn't. Uh, I was, <laughs> I'm glad that you did though. <laughs> Um, over at the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. It's called Kids in the Kitchen, Hands-On Valentine's Day Baking. It's for ages 7 and 13. It's $15. Um, and they're making basic pizza dough, caprice calzones, and chocolate cherry cookies. Wow. Yeah. Um, over at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center, they have a Valentine's Day card making station at 11 a.m. Uh, it's 11 to 2. It's free. Donations are accepted. You can just drop in, though, and um, make some car Valentine's Day cards. <clears throat> Over at the Missoula Insectarium, they have biomimicry prototypes. Um, they're going to be gaining inspiration from their arthropod friends, and they're going to be building a prototype with materials that mimic their favorite arthrop arthropod adaptations. That was really hard to say. <clears throat> Over at Marshall Mountain, starting at 11, they have a snowshoe classic. They've got a snowshoe race. Uh, they've got games, uh, live music, food, fire, face painting, and more. Starts at 11. <clears throat> Family story time is at the Mon Missoula Public Library, also at 11. Um, and this is just a themed story, and they have an art activity. Spider feeding is at the butterfly, uh, is at the insectarium. They're feeding Rosie the Chilean rosehair tarantula. Uh, over at the Missoula Art Museum, they have their MAM's 44th Benefit Art Auction. It starts at 5 p.m. It looks like it's going to be at the University Center Ballroom, um, and it's going to be a festive night of fun and support for the arts. And then we have music. Uh, Old Sap is playing at Ma Imagination Brewing Company at 6. Letter B is at Draftworks Brewing Company at 6. Jeff Hamilton Trio is at the University of Montana UM Recital Hall at 7.30. Uh, KBGA's 20th annual end of thon is at stage 112 at 8. Uh, they've got uh, People Under the Stairs, which is a hip-hop group, as well as some other local hip-hop. Uh, over at uh, The Hive, they have Skate Night for Free Cycles. So money raised will help support the Skate Club Missoula and Free Cycles Community Bike Shop. There will be live music, and a suggested donation price is 10 bucks. Uh, over at Monks, they've got DJ L Rock starting at 9. <laughs> Uh, Dat Music Conference's half birthday is coming to the palace at 9. Dat Music Conference usually happens in the summer, so it must be the halfway point to that. Um, and then some, a few other things for music is Absolutely with Chris Moon and Monte Carlo at the Badlander at 9. Band in Motion at the Union Club at 9.30. And then Dakota Poor Man Band is playing at the Sunrise Saloon also at 9.30. So uh, check out MissoulaEvents.net. Check out the University of Montana website. Check out the Independent and the local newspaper to find out more of your events going on in the community. Yeah. Um, the other day, um, I tried to make... Um, I get, okay, I cut potatoes. I mixed it with olive oil and I put it in the uh, my oven. And I tried to make like you know fries or something like yeah. baked baked potatoes yeah. in a way. It didn't turn out that well. How long sure. did you leave them in there for? Uh, forty minutes. Hmm. So apparently. What temperature did you put them on? Uh, four hundred. Uh, huh. What, what is? What did it, it must work? Have, it must have been the coconut oil and flour that I used. It might have been. You put flour on them too. Yeah, I put like just kind of around them. Yeah, it might not have worked. Maybe. Why? What happened? Was it how they turn out like? I guess they're a little soft, but not too bad. I don't know. They, I'll, I just have to deal with them. Yeah, I bet if it was olive oil, it probably would have cooked a little better rather yeah. than coconut oil. 
It's because, I don't know. You don't really it's know. coconut oil. It's, yeah. it's new. It's a whole other playing field. You're, it totally is. You have to learn how to cook with it. Whereas the olive oil, like, everyone kind of already knows. It just kind of you know? does it. It's yeah, it just kind of happens. Yeah. But coconut oil, you, there's, like, some science behind it. It's, like, it. inbranded in our DNA is how to use olive oil. Yeah. There's some science behind coconut oil, yeah. for sure. But, uh, yeah, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but today so is got, First Friday, of yeah. course, and uh, there's art. And, of course, the last two art clips have been shown is the last time we're going to be showing those videos because they have the kill date of this week. Mm -hmm. No more art clips from the <laughs> Zach or the Ma'am for the, because then we basically have a, a whole bunch of new art installations all around it, the Mizzou Art Museum. Yep. So here is uh, a little taste of the Mizzou, Mizzou Art Museum, and uh, get, it, tonight is your last chance to go and check it out, check it all out. So without further ado, here's the um, art clip by Rick. Hey everybody and welcome back to Wake Up Missoula. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about City Council. And today in City Council, there was a specific thing that was going on. And of course, um, the Committee of the Whole was a meeting in which they um, devoted the meeting to redu and reduce, uh, which featured a zero waste resolution that read, reducing waste is important to Missoula and is mentioned in both the Energy Conservation and Climate Action Plan and the R Missoula Growth Policy. Last year, the City Energy Conservation Coordinator created a zero waste plan for the city. And last month, Developmental Services launched an education program to encourage um, deconstruction over conventional demolition and disposal. These are the positive actions that we should take to build in this momentum. And of course, that's what they say. Um, here is uh, Jeremy Drake, and he's talking about what some of the um, stuff that, uh, wait, th this is what I wrote. He's the, uh, Jeremy Drake is Education Outreach Coordinator, and he talks about what home resources, um, it, just a little bit of history lesson for those of you who don't know um, what home resource is. Home resource started in 2003 by two students from the university who were also working in the building trades. They um, saw a lot of waste on the job, and it compelled them to think of a different way to do things. So they decided to start a little building materials reuse center. Thirteen years later, Home Resource employs 27 Missoulians, uh, keeps more than a million dollars a year in the local economy, uh, has helped put more than 10,000 tons of materials back to work in Montana homes, schools, businesses, playgrounds, birdhouses, doghouses, all over the place. And it's inspired a culture of reuse in our community um, through things like our annual event, Spontaneous Construction. All right, so um, that was basically a brief um, thing about what Home Resources has done and what it's doing and, what it, um, and just a little brief history about what it's all about. And uh, the next um, clip I'm going to show you guys is more about Drake talks about the outreach and events Home Resources putting on, leading him to a brand new program just for the kiddies. And this is what he had to say. So tomorrow we're launching our ZWAP program. It's the Zero Waste Ambassadors program to knock out waste in Missoula. Um, 
It's a program that's targeting fifth graders in Missoula County Public Schools. And um, we're bumping it up this year. We piloted it last spring, and it was successful. So now we've got over 20 classes signed up to take this, to go through our program this spring. It's these young Missoulians, the Zwappers and the, and the first Lego leaguers and the savers who give me hope that Missoula really can move away from this, which is the Missoula landfill, 15 years of disposal space sitting there in the wide open with 79, well, another 60 more that hasn't broken ground yet, that is still open space. Um, so moving from this to this, green jobs like at Home Resource and all the other possible green jobs that are out there, composting, backyard composting, community composting, more zero waste events like this Earth Day event last year, which was the first time they made it a zero waste event. And oh, more, you know, more open spaces. We like open spaces. That's why we live in Montana. Clean air. All right. So, of course, that was um, just kind of like what they're doing right now in terms of programs and outreach stuff. And, like, honestly, did you, did you saw that picture of the, um, um, the love landfill? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Only in Montana can our landfill actually look much better than what you'd expect from a landfill because it looked like a bunch of dirt and all you saw was those two tires that's actually pretty good compared to what you know you see all over other any other place but of course take that um enthusiasm and bring it back down because we have some terrible news even more so. <laughs> of course montana is generates 60 percent more waste than the national average <laughs> And that's big. That's a lot. And you think, oh, Missoula's all cool. It's like, no, Missoula's not that great. Because in Missoula, uh, I mean, of course, our recycling rate is at 22%, while the national average is 35%. And Montana doesn't even have a recycling plant, like refinery for anything, you know, like what they always have. And the, and the very interesting thing about this particular meeting is that they were mentioning that um, other cities, Missoula's always about, oh, let's keep it green, bro. And Every other city in in Montana is greener than Missoula. Missoula is one of the worst um, wastes in the state. Think about that. Let let us just let that let us just let that sit. Okay. So this next statement is from Marilyn Marler, and she comments how Missoula is moving towards zero waste. Jones, the conservation coordinator, created a zero waste plan for City Hall, which is being implemented. Jack Stuckey gave us a report about that. And last, well, last month, which I think was December when I wrote this, uh, Development Services launched an education program to encourage, encourage deconstruction over conventional demolition and disposal. And these are just some, some examples of really positive actions at the city, and we should build, take this time to build on the momentum and pass this resolution, hopefully, and let all the community members know that we're taking this seriously. All right. So you heard from Marilyn Marler. Um, they're going to take it seriously. Um, this next quote is the very last quote. Quote, and this is Chase Jones, and he is with Home Resource. Um, he's one of the staff members, and he answers a question about how the city um, could work with other organizations whose target is moving towards zero waste. It's not necessarily because the city is thinking about like doing this, but also um, one of the things that they were really talking about is how other organizations can actually get involved with this particular resolution, move towards zero waste, rather than having like the city saying, we're gonna be moving towards zero waste, making like regulations, but we're all, but it didn't have the language in there, and uh, Harlan Wells wanted it to make it available for many other places to actually have input and have uh, their own way of generating green, rather than going by like a city, wide zero waste standard having a way where it can be uh, more flexible for a lot of clean energy and here is chase jones and he is talking a little more about moving towards zero waste community-wide effort sort of phase two of our municipal plan which is now climate smart missoula and that plan we've managed to build a great network of people both internally and in the community from all of those organizations and so um, I can see coming up with a way to carve out some time for perhaps my position to facilitate that group that then develops this plan 
and moves it forward like some of those other efforts, if, if that answers your question or gets at what you're asking. All right, so um, that's basically all the quotes I have for this um, particular meeting. Of course, the rest of the meeting is online, and you can access it by going on there. But of course, um, they left the motion in a position that makes it more flexible for the zero waste organizations to work together without relying too much on the city to uh, mitigate on what's going on. But of course, uh, they still have a lot of input uh, in the long run of things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, well, how do you feel about uh, that smack of information that Missoula is not as green as it we, doesn't we surprise, think we well, are? It doesn't surprise me. Like we don't have like a required recycling or required composting laws in place like other cities around the United States do. Yep. Like if that was required, then I would understand that we would you know be seen as a little more greener. But it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Like it, it, it's just usually based on population and mm -hmm. as much as the landfill. Because mm -hmm. as soon as the landfill starts growing and growing, it's like we got to really do something about this. Yeah. And we're not next to a major body of water, which some communities actually throw it into their ocean. Yeah, like we, it's like they have like a garbage island. We don't yeah. have that kind of option here, so we have to figure out how we can do that. I think the only way for us to do that would make it mandatory and if they don't do it, impose a fine. Yeah. And then have and build a recycling plant. Yeah. That's and the only way that we would be able yeah, to do that. Yeah, you just have to if you make a recycling plant like in middle maybe Lewis Town, Montana. Mm -hmm. It's like right in the middle of Montana. People can actually go there mm -hmm. and do that kind of thing. But of course, if you guys are looking for any kind of recycling areas or recycling metals, aluminum, um, newspaper, and I think cardboard, it's Pacific Steel is also the place which is just off of um, uh, Palmer Street. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's where I always go to to drop off my there's cans. There's lots of different and areas glass. too. There's a lot of different areas around town, yes. Garden City Recycling, um, as well as a couple of different private companies that'll come and pick up your recycling. We too. have our own um, pickup for recycling. We just mm -hmm. have a bin, we put all the recyclables in there, they come in and pick it up. But that's just something that it ne you don't necessarily need to have a company that specifically does recycling. What you need to do is um, fix the people, I mean, like not, they're not broken, but expand on what mm -hmm. we already have. We already have a strong infrastructure of garbage. Yeah. We already have garbage cleanup coming in every single week. And if we paid them maybe another two, three dollars an hour more mm -hmm. just to do that and just to um, involve with recycling, it will save money in the long run. I would think so. And it would, you can be able to take all the recyclables along the way. Maybe you can have an, a, a separate bin in the trash Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Now that's just something to think about for sure. Um, but if you're interested in this meeting and more, you can log on to the City of Missoula's website, www.ci.missoula.mt.us. You can Google City of Missoula as well. And of course, I didn't do any social networking. No, we did not, not talk about where you can find us. Because <gasps> oh one thing I like to do is talk about us. Mm -hmm. And here is us at wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Uh, you could like us on our Facebook page. You could totally follow us on Twitter. You could like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like MCAT on Facebook. And to find out more information about us, you can just check us out at MCAT.org. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is our Saturday drop-in Stop Motion Animation Club. Um, it goes from 1 to 5, but our only thing is this weekend we've got a birthday party, so we're capping it at 15 kids. Yeah. So after the 15th kid, we're closed for the rest of the day. I know. Heard it from the boss. I think that we're going to have a lot of really angry parents and children at us tomorrow. Or just really but, sad parents. Uh, but we also had 17 kids uh, over the weekend. We had 17 kids on Friday between the three of us. Yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way we can do that. Really I'll can. go crazy. Yeah. I don't. There's a reason I don't have children right now. <laughs> you know? I'm more than happy to work with them, but at a limited time and a limited number of hours. <laughs> it's true. I don't care. Yeah. I, I, that's totally, yeah. that's totally fine, Noel. Yeah. But if you want to get in contact with us about being on our show, um, you can contact us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. But of course, if you're too afraid to call us, you can email us MCAT at MCAT.org. Mm -hmm. Or you can find us if you Google anything that says Wake Up Missoula. We're all over the place. YouTube, Twitter. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't have the Tumblr. Maybe we'll work on the Tumblr. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably not. Whatever. Yeah, it's a We've got enough social media. We got, we got plenty. Yeah. All right. Without further ado, um, without Wake Up without wake up Missoula, I'd have nothing. No, <laughs> without Wake Up Missoula, we are. We are just people. People. In yes. the city of Missoula. <laughs> <laughs> so for Wake Up Missoula, yes. my name is Noel McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's Asaf Adonai. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs>